what did you expect? The forest is full of stories. Let me tell you one of them now. It happened here but a long time ago when the forest was not a place of cycle trails and picnic benches but a place of shadows and of fear, of magic and of strange transformations. Take this story as a warning for the lovers in my story were careless, very careless. Do you know what it's like to be young and in love when your love seems so powerful that the rest of the world falls away like some trivial plane that you've left behind. Because you are drinking the wine of the gods and you feel immortal. The lovers in my story loved like that. Their names were Yorinda and Yuringal. From the names it was obvious they were meant to be together, isn't it? Now, Yurinda was beautiful and kind, and Yuringal was loyal and handsome. And it's hard to get much privacy in a medieval village, so the lovers frequently went into the forest to be alone together, and everything would have been all right if they had only heeded the warnings. Have you noticed the way that fairy stories are full of warnings? Whatever you do, do not go into the locked room. Whatever you do, don't look over your shoulder. Well, ever since they were young, Yurinda and Yuringal have been warned. If you go into the forest, stay at the edge. Do not go in too deep. Well, you know how these stories go. One day, their arms wrapped around each other, gazing into each other's eyes, they wandered deeper and deeper into the forest. The trees grew denser, the air colder, the sky darker. Even the birds fell silent. And then they saw they were standing in a dark shadow and they looked up and there were the walls of a dark, forbidding castle. And all the warnings flashed back into their mind, but it was too late. There was a rumble of thunder, the lightning crashed around their feet and the rain began to fall like stair rods. The doors of the castle were flung open and a bony finger beckoned them inside. Now, women with crooked noses and pointy chins that live alone in the woods are not generally known for their hospitality. But we are not talking any ordinary kind of witch here. We're not talking pointy hats and broomsticks and a black cat. Oh no, we are talking evil. We are talking the kind of negative force that wants to snuff the life out of everything, to squash every bit of joy and love out of the universe. So it was with a certain amount of uneasiness that Yorinda and Yoringal accepted her offer of a bed for the night. And they did not sleep. And when midnight fell, they were filled with a sense of foreboding, of an inexplicable sorrow. We are waiting here to die, cried Yurinda. And they decided to try and escape. And so they crept down the stone stairs of the castle and into the great hall. But they stopped there in amazement, for there were 700 young men all dressed in finery like princes, some with their swords still in their hand, but all still as statues, rooted to the ground. Eyes, lips, limbs, all cold and motionless. They fled into the next chamber, but then stood still again, for hanging from the ceiling and the walls, 
700 bird cages full of bright and beautiful birds of every hue, but all completely silent. And as they stood and stared, the sorceress glided into the room in the shape of a serpent, for she was a shapeshifter of the darkest kind. And right in front of Uringel's eyes, she wrapped herself around Eurinda's neck and choked her scream in her very throat. And then, before he could do anything, Eurinda changed into the form of a small brown nightingale. And as the enchantress grabbed her and thrust her into a cage, Uringle, who feared for his own life, without a second's hesitation, threw himself out of the window into the brambles and ran, and ran as fast as he could back to the village and hid. But in the morning he feels great remorse for having abandoned his lover and he goes to the old wise woman of the village, the soothsayer, the midwife, the healer, the herbalist, and he tells her what has happened to Eurinda and he asks, is there no charm or potion that could restore my lover to her human form? And the old woman says, for every evil there is a remedy, but those of you who are wise will know there is always a price. You deserted your lover in her hour of need and I cannot undo the fate you have sown for yourself. But take this potion made from the blood of the phoenix and feed it to the little brown bird that is Eurinda. But first you must break the power of this dark queen of the night. You know she is a skinwalker, a shapeshifter. Some night she flies as a screech owl, then drops like a stone and tears the little creatures with her beak. Some night she glides as a serpent and squeezes the life out of the little creatures. But on some rare nights, she roots herself into the earth as a black and wizened tree, dry, brittle, lightning blasted. And she waits for the bright and beautiful birds to land when she will suddenly snap shut her bony fingers and crush the life out of them. You must wait until she is in the form of a tree. Then you must take your axe and with all your strength swing at the trunk. You must fell her in a single stroke if you wish to live. And now your ringles love is really tested, his loyalty is tested, for he creeps into the dark undergrowth by the castle and waits. And many a night he sees the sorceress as the screech owl. He does not see her root into the ground until on the seventh night of the seventh month of the seventh year, she goes to the forest at midnight under a full moon and she roots dry and brittle as a lightning blasted tree and when she does Yorinda takes his axe and he swings with a mighty stroke and there is a terrible scream as the tree topples oozing black sap and the a terrible scream as the sky is rent in two and suddenly there is chaos and confusion everywhere as the lifeblood seeps back into the 700 young men and they run here and there and as 700 bird cages burst open as the young maidens are restored to human form until there is only one cage left and Uringle goes to the little brown bird that is Eurinda and he pours the potion made from the blood of the phoenix down the beak of the little brown bird. A 
and there is his Eurinda, restored to human form as beautiful as before. But when she turns to him and opens her mouth to speak, her words come out as the song of the nightingale. And when Eurindel turns to answer her, he too trills like a bird. There is always a price to pay. And so, a happy ending of sorts. Eurinda and Eurindel, now that the dark rule of the sorceress has ended, still wander the forest and sing to one another. But no one can understand a word they say, for they never speak words again. But do lovers need words? I'm not sure. But could you let go of your words? Could you be silent forever? I know I couldn't, for words are my food, my bread and butter, my life, my love. So, if you go down to the woods today, perhaps you had better go in disguise, for you might just be in for a big surprise. <laughs>